What's it like to be one of the 12? To be named in that list, identified with certainty as one of the 12 closest associates of Jesus. We ate with him. We traveled with him. We heard every word Jesus said and watched everything he did. That's what's different about this kind of discipleship. There's no separation between who you are in public and who you are in private. Basically, no hiding of your true self, flaws and all. We shared everything, food, money, you name it. Like Peter the Loudmouth, James and John, son of thunder, Matthew the tax collector, Thomas the doubter. We all had our quirks, our roles. What's my role? Treasurer. I hold the money bag. There's a reason for that. I make sure we don't give so much to the poor that we don't have anything to eat. Seriously, I'm surrounded by bleeding hearts. If I didn't keep a separate stash that no one knows about, we'd run out all the time. Jesus talks about the new world. He says when he sits on his throne, there will be 12 thrones for us. One for each of the 12 tribes of Israel. The 12, that's us. In a lot of ways, Jesus trusts us. He sent us out in twos to multiply his influence. We did some amazing things. I drove out demons. I healed diseases. We raised the dead. And for those who still rejected us, we shook the dust off our feet and moved on to people more deserving. I can't describe how great that was to be that kind of influencer. For about a year, Jesus rode this wave of popularity. Then he started saying the wrong things. The crowd started dispersing. That kind of decline, it's depressing. I couldn't figure out what he was doing. It got to a point when most everybody had turned back and gone home. Jesus looked at us, the 12, and asked, do you want to go as well? Before I could answer, Peter did, Lord, whom shall we go to? You have the words of eternal life. That's the expectation, right? The ship sinks, the crew goes down with the captain. Here was the response from our rabbi. Did I not choose you, the 12? And yet one of you is a devil. He didn't say anyone's name. He wasn't looking at me, but still. Anyway, like I said, the ship is sinking. The crowds are bailing. The chief priests and Pharisees are off to the side scheming. It doesn't take a genius to tell where this is all heading. The Passover is coming up and Jesus still wants to go to Jerusalem. It's like wanting to go to a battleground for a picnic. So we enter Jerusalem with a large procession. They're praising Jesus, the hair standing up on the necks of the Pharisees. The atmosphere is charged. We all gathered in this upper room for the Passover. It was like a place of calm in the middle of a raging sea. Again, here's what our rabbi says. Truly, truly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. We're all looking around, trying to figure out who he's talking about. So Peter tells John to ask. Jesus says, it is he to whom I will give this morsel of bread when I have dipped it. To this point, he hadn't said anyone's name. He wasn't looking at me, but still. You know what happened? He dipped the bread in the wine and handed this morsel to me. I tell you, I put this bread in my mouth and it burned. Now there's no doubt, he's talking about me. I followed this rabbi for three years through the ups and downs. He says, I have a devil. He says, I'm going to betray him. Then he says, what you're going to do, do quickly. Are you kidding me? I don't think anybody even knew what was happening. So I grabbed the money bag and I'm out of there. They thought I was buying something for the feast, but I'm gone. I step out into the darkness and I'm not going back. If Jesus wants a standoff, I know who to talk to. These same chief priests have been watching this whole drama play out. It's not my first Passover with Jesus. There are crowds all over Jerusalem by day, but it's different when it's dark. I know exactly where this standoff is going to play out. Jesus and his disciples, 12 bleeding hearts and one realist.